Welcome back, everybody. Hi, Christy. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing good. Doing good. How about you? I'm doing well. I think it's interesting that we're um, that we're talking about sleep today. <laughs> yes, we're talking about sleep on a night on a morning that I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> Tell me about it. What happened? You know, I don't know. I'm just I'm 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 not a great sleeper. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm really a light sleeper. So I wake up very easily. Ah. So any movement, you know, my dog, whatever wakes me up. And then just sometimes I can't fall back asleep. And also I had to get up super early this morning because my son had to be up early. And I think that was on my mind. So I just kept like waking up, checking the clock, making sure that I wasn't going <laughs> to oversleep. That's my, my anxious mind. It's, it's, it's the boy, the mind can, can wreak havoc on your sleep. That's for sure. I know anytime I've got lots going on, it, it, it can affect my sleep because it's just, you can, it's just difficult to settle your mind down. And yeah. uh, I know for sure, um, you know, my kids, my kids experience the same thing. You know, you can always yeah. tell when they've got a lot going on in their little brains, because it makes, uh, it makes it challenging to, to get a good night's sleep. Yeah, absolutely. And as a kid, I, I had a lot of struggles with going to bed. I had a lot of trouble sleeping. Oh my gosh. I remember many nights laying in bed and like the night before the first day of school was like, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel like I remember laying, I being awake all night long. That's what it felt like to me as a kid. Like I felt like I never went to sleep. Like, you know, it was oh. just, my mind would be going. I didn't really have any tools at that time to to really help me to quiet that mind down and be able to like get a restful sleep yeah. and and then my own kids you know not all four of my kids but um they've all gone through different stages where sleep has been been a struggle and I know for many parents and kids sleep can kind of be like a, a battle you know yeah. at night and it can also come become like an anxious time because you know, you have a hard time. It's almost like, you know, you have a hard time falling asleep because you're anxious and then you get anxious about being anxious, falling asleep. And it's like this very bad cycle. Yeah. So yeah. And I know if I'm having a tough time sleeping at night, you know, and I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm looking at my clock and I, you know, and I get, and I get this thing going where I'm just like, okay, well, if I fall asleep right now, I'll get seven hours. And then of course an hour goes by, if I fall asleep right now, I'll get six hours. And then it's yeah. like this countdown. And then it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, and then you get stressed. Cause you're like, oh my gosh, if I only get five hours of sleep, how am I going to make it through my day? So then yeah. that makes you anxious. And so it just creates this, this vicious spiral. Um, yes, totally. Because we all know that we need sleep, right? Sleep oh. is such a big part of keeping our overall mental health and physical health, everything, our overall wellness, sleep is so, so important for, for every age. You know, we, we worry about our kids getting enough sleep all the time. We forget that we still need a lot of sleep too. hundred percent because so, so, so much of, of what we need to do to keep ourselves healthy, things like, you know, exercise, eating, right. You know, all of these things, sleep can wreak havoc on that. Like if I don't get enough sleep, I'm not going to have the energy to go for a walk or do my exercise or, or, you know, practice my, my yoga or whatever. And, 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 and then I, I don't know about you, but I always seem to gravitate towards poor choices nutritionally. If I don't have enough food, have enough sleep, I just I feel like I'm, you know, grabbing at chips or carbs <laughs> and just, sugars just something and yeah, to, something to keep me awake. Right. Yep. And so, so really it can, it can, uh, it can really wreak havoc and having, having, of course, we're, we're recording this during the midst of, of obviously of, of our continued pandemic and, and mm -hmm. I'm coming off of COVID myself and, and been fighting it. And, and that was the thing that was so frustrating for me. You know, I would, I would start coughing and then I would cough. And so then I, I would get, wake me back up again. And I felt like what I needed more than anything was a good night's mm -hmm. sleep to fight this off. I couldn't get it because I was coughing and yeah. that would stress me out. And so, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it, uh, it, it can definitely uh, affect the health, overall health and wellness when you're not, uh, when you're not getting a good night's sleep for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, you know, also too, like sometimes we get into bad habits 
you know, around our sleep time, you know, trying to, trying to settle ourselves down, you know, we end up turning on screens and maybe doing things that are not going to help us to get to fall asleep as quickly as we would like to. So I, you know, I think it's important to, to talk about that sleep routine and creating that routine for yourself and then creating that routine for your children too. It can really become, you know, actually kind of a kind of a fun thing when you start putting together some some bedtime routines. It can it can be a great time to connect with your kids. It, you know, it can be a great time to connect as a family. You really can can create a whole routine, you know, with the entire family and make it make it a really special time um, yeah. if you if you put some of these practices in place. Yeah, I love that because I think too for at least I know for my kids, especially the ones who are a little bit more anxious, a lot of the struggle around sleep and with children is that separation, you know, from the parent, right? Oftentimes, you know, the kids keep coming out, they want to get in bed with you, they have a hard time falling asleep, because they want to feel connected to you still that that separation anxiety piece really comes in. I mean, if you think about it, nighttime is, you know, like you, you go off to your bed, they go to their bed. It's really, you know, a time of separation. And so I think really focusing in on that mindful routine and connecting with your kids before bedtime can help strengthen that connection to kind of like hold them through the night where you're, you know, you're not right there with them. when my uh when this healthy sleep habits happy child and uh and, and this book was all about you know creating a routine around um you know settling down for bed and staying consistent with this routine and so and that was It looks like my, uh, yeah, you just yeah, froze there for a minute. Froze there. Oh, I'm not sorry. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So starting, so starting from day one, you know, with the, with the kids as, as infants and, and creating, uh, creating some good, healthy sleep habits. Yeah. And I think, I think that a lot of people talk about that with infant sleep, right. Yeah. Creating that routine, um, you know, staying on a good schedule and stuff. And then I think sometimes we tend to lose that a little bit as they get older and, and especially as they get to school age mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, you know, there's just activities and this and that and homework. And so my, our nights are so overfilled that we kind of lose sight of that consistency and that routine. So I think it's really nice to, um, give some suggestions about how you can, doesn't have to be complicated, right? It can be simple, but it can just have some nice time to connect. And then it's also, you know, even when you can't be there with your child, you're giving them the tools to set themselves up to be able to consistently wind themselves down and get ready for sleep. So when, and when you've got these routines in place, you know, it, it, it sends the sends a signal to your body. I mean, it really does like, like, it's like, okay, now it's time. And so, you know, and then, and then if you don't do that routine, it's, it, it's going to feel a little bit, uh, a little bit off. Right. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I think one of the, uh, one of a, a really, really special thing to do is to do some guided meditations together, um, at bedtime. So is that something you've done with your kids? Yes. I, and I love that idea. First of all, you know, a lot of times you're, you're reading at bedtime with your kids. Right. Sure. And so, which is this, great, it's a great, routine. which is great. Yeah. yeah. Every, you know, like I, we read every night I'm, I'm an avid reader. So I, I love to read and I love to read books with my kids and we get into to reading together. But I think the guided meditation links nicely with that because um, you know, guided meditations is a way that we can tell stories to our kids and have them use their imaginations, right? Thinking of what the pictures would look like in the story. And it actually will help them to become better readers and writers. Um, so that's like a added benefit to, um, you know, not only helping them to fall asleep, but it's a nice thing to pair like with reading at night. But so yeah, we do this all the time. And uh, it, it's a really nice time. And sometimes, you know, my kids 
would take take the lead and want to create um, the story or what it was about. And sometimes I I do that. Um, you can go go back and forth, but it's a really nice time to be be creative and get your kids to start to visualize and and use this type of meditation. So let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what a guided meditation is. And in, 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 uh, in Kidding Around Yoga, we've got, you know, we refer to it as the peaceful garden. And uh, the peaceful garden comes at, at the end of a class, the end of a yoga class. And in an adult class, um, you know, we call it Shavasana. Um, mm -hmm. But, but uh, with the kids, you know, we call it peaceful garden. And, and, and what we do is we really, we take them, like you said, on a, on a, on a journey, just on this, on this imaginary adventure in their mind. And I think one of the things that's, um, that we try and do when we're, when we're doing a peaceful garden uh, with our kiddos in classes, try and tap into all of the senses. So for instance, um, a peaceful garden, and, 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 it, and it, we, we call it garden. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a trip to a garden. It can be a trip right. you know, to the beach or to the mountains or, or in, in your backyard, whatever your favorite place is. But we try and you know, uh, in, encourage kids to think about, all right, what sorts of things do you see? What colors do you see? You know, what, what, are the, what color are the flowers that you see? What do they smell like? Don't they smell amazing? And can you feel the warm sun on your skin? And do you hear the birds chirping in the trees? And you know, all of these things. So we're kind of incorporating, bringing all of those senses into it as they, as they go on this, on this journey and uh, uh, to, to wherever it is that they're going. Right. Right. Yeah. And I love it because I, I was just recently reading an article about visualizations and how our brain, uh, when we use visualization, our body doesn't know the difference of, of it being in our imagination or of it actually happening. This is like the great power of our mind body connection. Right. And so I love that piece of it because we can we can think of things that make us calm and peaceful. And if we're visualizing those things, then it's going to naturally start to help our body to relax and be calm, which is awesome. And then what I also love is teaching our kids to think about what does make them feel calm and peaceful, because it's not the same for everyone. Some people love the sound of the ocean or the sound of rain or a flower garden. Others don't. Maybe, you know, they're they're fearful of the ocean. So that wouldn't be one something that you would want to visualize to make your body relax if it's something that you're you're fearful of. So it's really nice to explore that with your kids and like have them think of it like, what are places that make you feel calm? What are smells that make you feel like cozy and relaxed and and ready to to fall asleep? And kind of talk about that so you can use that when you're doing this guided med meditation, if you're creating them on your own, there's also many out there that you can listen to and, um, you know, with your child and you can, you can both participate, but if you are creating the, the meditations, it'd be great to make a list with your kids of, you know, different things in nature that make them feel relaxed or different colors that make them feel calm that you would want to bring up and yeah. just talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I love that. Um, that that's a really really great one you know and 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 i think you know so, do, so doing the guided meditations is great another thing you know is to really um really tap into the breath again you know and we we, we continue to we continue to bring this up i think on every episode we talk about how important you know breathing is but um but with regard to you know helping the body relax uh, to fall asleep this is this is something that that i personally use on a regular basis me and too. all I do is when I'm laying there in bed, I just bring my hands onto my belly, right? And, and so then I just kind of bring my awareness right there. I get that tactile sensation of the hands on the belly. And I just think, breathe deeply, breathe into my belly. And I feel my belly expand. I feel my hands, you know, raise up as, as, my, as I breathe in. And then I breathe. And I just repeat in my head, like, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, right? It's as simple as that. And then for the, for the kids, you know, if you're doing this with your children, um, I know one thing that works real, real well is this buddy breathing, or, you know, they get a little stuffed animal, a little uh, beanie baby, or, or, you know, some little something, e even something as small as like a pom-pom or, or something, yeah. just something that they can take and put onto their belly so they can actually see, like, when you breathe in, do you see that, you know, rise up? Do you see it go down? You know, that sort of thing. So that, uh, that, that buddy breathing is a, is a fun one for kids. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's hard sometimes to teach kids to belly breathe. They, they don't, they might not naturally be able to breathe all the way down into their belly until they have that something resting on their belly. 
giving them a point of focus of really where to send that breath all the way down there to, to make their belly rise. So sure, I love that sure. one too. Yeah. Yeah. And of course that, as we talked about, you know, that deep breathing stimulates that vagus nerve and that's going to trigger just the calming, the lowering of the heart rate and just that, that calming sensation. Um, that's so, yeah, so, it's so powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I also love, um, using a body scan, you know, oftentimes I, this works really well for me. Um, sometimes, you know, you just have like built up tension or, um, for me, I, I am always finding a lot of tension in my jaw and my neck. So going to bed at night, I notice that in myself. And so I kind of like just talk myself through a body scan and begin to, and what we mean by a body scan is just taking notice and starting like at your toes and trying to, you know, bring your attention to your feet and your toes and, you know, maybe tense and relax and just try to slowly begin to relax all the muscles in your body. And just by focusing your attention on there, I mean, it's, it's really, it takes practice, but it's, it's really an incredible feeling when you can really, it's like, sometimes I can almost feel like a heat in that part of my body as I move up, you know, and then move up my legs. I can feel my legs feeling warmer and relaxed. And so I, I like to use this a lot. And this is great for kids too, who have a lot of extra energy maybe at bedtime and they kind of like fidgeting around, um, you know, and they can't kind of sit still giving them this again, point of focus on their body can help them to squeeze, you know, and tense and relax and kind of give them a focus for their movement. And before you know it, their whole body is relaxed. That that's really the whole, the whole purpose behind meditation, right? It's, it's not necessarily eliminating all thoughts from your mind, but it's, it's giving your mind a job. Yeah. Like, all right, here's where I want you to go. Just acknowledging mm -hmm. the fact that, yep, my mind's kind of busy. I've got that, you know, monkey mind, they call it. Right. And so it's like, like a little monkey jumping from branch to branch. And, and, and so you, you get this monkey mind going and, and you have a hard time settling down. But you, if you give your mind a job, like, here's where I want you to focus. I want you to focus on your breath. I want you to focus on this particular part of your body. I find when in body scans, um, where I tend to hold tension is it's, it's between my eyebrows, right? That little mm -hmm. spot between the mm -hmm. eyebrows where you get that little furrowed brow yeah. sensation. <laughs> and I don't even realize it until it's like, bring your awareness there. And you're like, Oh yeah, relax. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. It's like, oh, I really am kind of holding on to some, some tension there. Furrowed brow. <laughs> yeah. So, totally. But yeah, body scan, uh, body scan is a, is a great one. I love, I love that. Um, you know, for one thing, my, my kids, and, and of course my boys are now uh, 12 and uh, almost 14. And for Christmas this year, uh, they each got uh, this, a new blanket for their bed. Right. And it's, it's not a weighted blanket, but it's a heavy blanket. And, mm -hmm. and my oldest son, uh, the first night he had it with him in bed, he, he came downstairs the next morning. He's like, he's like, Oh, I love that new blanket. It just, it feels like a weighted blanket on me. It's really, really cool. That can be, um, another really, really yeah. great, uh, a really great sensory tool for, for helping, helping calm down and, and help. Yeah. Them. There's a, there's a lot of props we could use, sure. at, um, you know, during, during this bedtime routine, the weighted blanket, some, they also have like weighted stuffed animals, um, mm -hmm. for kids. I've seen ones that like have like little paws that go over their shoulders and lay on their chest. That can be really comforting. Um, any kind of like sensory type thing like that. Also the eye pillows. I love mm. using those like lavender yeah. scented eye pillows to, to lay across um, their eyes to help to relax and close their eyes. And those are real mm -hmm. easy to make too. You can just, yes. you can take a sock, like a tube sock, fill it with rice, you know? And, and I mean, and if, if you're, if you like the scent of lavender or something like that, you can add some essential oil to it or some, mm -hmm. you know, dried lavender or something and, 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 and give you that aromatherapy. You wouldn't need to, but you could, you know, but by sure. putting that, that, that right, I mean, that's easy. And then just tie off the end of the sock. I mean, you could sew it too, if you wanted to, but just tie off the end of the sock. And then all of a sudden you have this, this nice little eye pillow. I made those for, for both my boys and both my boys had them in their beds for a while. They, they would use yeah. those. So, yeah, yeah, my daughter had one for a while and, and I think she felt like it was like she was in a spa, you know, like she felt like very fancy. Oh, and that's she was, her, eye, her eye pillow, you know, as a seven-year-old girl, you know, like she likes to feel fancy. And so, you know, she'd she'd go through her, you know, oh, I gotta get my eye pillow, you know. And so <laughs> that's she put it on. It's very cute. So yeah, like lots of props like that. Even props um like like a white noise machine is always great too. 
My son, my <laughs> oldest son to this day still sleeps with his white noise machine. He's, we started that as a baby and he has, I don't want to say he has a difficult time because so, he can sleep without it, but, but he loves his noise machine. Loves it. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people do. And my daughter, she's 17 now, my older daughter, she doesn't use a a white noise machine, but she has a fan, a ceiling fan in her room. And Mm. she always has that on. And I think it's more the noise than because she even uses it in the winter. It's more the noise of the fan, I think, rather than, you know, the, the, the wind of the fan or that she's hot or something. I think she likes that sound of the fan going to help her, help her fall asleep. My youngest son got, um, for, for his birthday, uh, back in October, he got a, one of these galaxy projector thingies, Mm. it's a galaxy thing, but it's like this little light and it projects this, like, I don't know, this little, all these different lights onto the ceiling. And it actually makes noise to it. Like little, little birds chirping or little, little nature sounds or whatever. And Oh boy, he loves that thing at night. That's, that's so soothing for him, you know? And, and, here's the thing though, it's going to be different for every kid, right? I mean, not every kid's going to like white noise. Not every kid's going to love a, a a weighted blanket or a gallons or whatever it is. So, so I think experimenting with different, um, different things, different props, different, you know, meditation techniques, whether it's body scan or the the peaceful garden or, you know, experimenting with different things to figure out what it is that's going to resonate with, with, with your child, with your family. Um, But I think it's whatever it is, consistency right having a consistent routine yeah yeah and create a little space um so when my daughter who my 17 year old when she was in really in the height of her anxiety sleep was really a struggle for her Mm. um and you know I would have to sit this was when she was like 12 13 I would have to sit in her room until she fell asleep and it was a whole big long you know and I had three other children so it was a really a stressful time Um, and so her, she was working with a therapist and they created this bedtime routine and they, she, she tried out things and tested things out and find stuff that worked. And she used like coloring at night and stuff to calm her down, but they created what they call, and she still has this, um, you know, routine down, um, her relaxation station. And so she had like a, a little uh, piece of paper that she made a list of all the things that she liked at night that were calming to her. And not that she had to do them all every single night, but she would go to her relaxation station and she would choose what, what is she going to do that night? Music was a big thing for her and coloring and taking a nice warm bath. And so she had all these things on her list and then whatever props she needed, she had in this little container. So she would pull it out every night and she'd choose what what she was going to use as her sleep tools that night. So, you know, you can create this little spot for, for you and your child to, you know, whether it's a calm corner somewhere in their room where they have the things or just a little box of all of their things that they have that are going to be their sleep tools. You know, I, I like the idea of that. And, and, and I think, um, I, I think you said, you said something here and, and I'll, and I'll try, I'll get your two cents on it, but, but having a corner or a spot in their room where they can go and, and, and do something like this, do a, do coloring or, or something that's relaxing to them. But I think having it outside of their bed, you know, it could be in their room, but maybe not mm-hmm. necessarily in their bed. Right. And, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, I'll toss it to you to see what your thoughts are on that. But I think, you know, really designating the bed is this is where we sleep. This isn't where we color. It isn't where we, you know, play on technology or anything like that. But this is is our sleep area, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Other than the meditations, I think you can do meditations in bed because that's really bringing you down into the sleep time. But coloring and, uh, you know, other things like that. Yes. I would say outside of the bed, because you really want to associate the bed with it's time to go to sleep. Remember that, that connection we want to make right with those. I don't know about you, but I have a certain position that I, I, oh, I curl up on my left side. That's when I know I'm about to fall asleep, right? Your body knows like when you hit that bed, when you hit that pillow, like, okay, it's time to go to sleep. That's what we want our kids to associate. Um, their bed with. So yeah, I, I would agree. No screens um, and, you know, no play in their bed, make it, make a little spot off to the side for, for them to, to do all the other things. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. I like that. 
This is great. Well, I know um, one of the things that we would love to do is to, um, you know, to actually practice one of these like guided meditations that we talk about. And at Kidding Around Yoga, we've got, um, you can actually download some scripts. You can actually get, uh, we, have, we have an ebook called The Peaceful Garden. And so you can actually get some of these scripts and, and do them. Uh, you know, you can, you can read them um, to your kids and use them as scripts, but we'd love to take you through one of these so you can kind of get a get a feel for for what that what that's like so um so maybe we'll, we'll do that here we'll as we wrap things up and then we'll move right into our uh in, into our peaceful garden script yeah and it's a great opportunity for you first to listen to it and then try it out with your kids yeah yeah sounds good all right so we'll uh we'll dive right into the peaceful garden great Come to a very comfortable position, either seated or lying on your bed. Now take a moment and squeeze every muscle in your body as tight as you can. And then relax. Do that one more time. Squeeze every muscle in your body as tight as you can. And then relax. Now take a deep breath in through your nose. Fill your whole body up with air and then slowly exhale all the air out. Now imagine that your bed has turned into a magic flying carpet. Your carpet can be any color you'd like. Your magic carpet begins to lift you up, up, up into the sky. The higher you fly, the safer you feel on your magic carpet. You can look down and see your room far below you. And if you look around, you can see birds flying past and clouds floating by. Maybe you see your friends or your family members flying with you on their own carpets, or maybe you are flying all by yourself. The cool breeze blows through your hair as you zoom through the sky. In the distance, you can see your peaceful garden. It can be anywhere. Your garden can be in a field, on a mountain, on a glacier, underwater, or even on another planet. When you get close to your peaceful garden, gently bring your magic carpet down to land. Take a moment and look around at your garden. Where are you? Begin to walk around and explore your garden. You can decorate your garden with anything you'd like. Books, posters, flowers, stuffed animals, anything that makes you happy. Are there sounds in your garden? Like birds singing, mermaids laughing, music playing? What's the temperature like in your garden? What does your garden smell like? I'm going to let you rest in your garden for a while. You can keep exploring and decorating, or you can simply rest peacefully in your safe space. Now it's time to leave your peaceful garden. Take one last look around as you climb back onto your magic carpet. Your garden will be here waiting for you whenever you need to take a break. Feel your carpet lift up into the sky again and watch your peaceful garden grow smaller and smaller. Enjoy the ride back to your room and come to land on your bed again. Take a moment to remember how peaceful and happy you felt in your garden and try to keep that with you for the rest of the day. <laughs>